Off this play for Wayne Selden every time down the floor. Oh! Wayne Selden? I wrote that one too, Nick. All of them. Wayne Selden. I feel like University of Kansas products, if we can get a fact check on that. Man, he had a game last night. One. Yeah, man. The Grizzlies, they went from tanking to... Uh, they, 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 I mean, they, did they forget? Back to back. Awful wins for Memphis. Yeah. I mean, devastating wins for Memphis. You know, guys, at some point, there just aren't any records left to make in the NBA. And thankfully for LeBron James, we are not quite at that point. Yes, close, not yet. Last night, he scored 41 points. 31 more than he needed to tie Michael Jordan's streak of 866 consecutive double-digit scoring games. He also had 10 rebounds and 8 assists, but that's not important now. Cavs beat the Hornets 118-105, holding on to third place in the Eastern Conference. Nick Wright, does LeBron have to play like this for the Cavs to have any shot at winning the title every night? At winning the title, absolutely. How about getting there? It, uh, getting there, he has to play like this often, but not every night. But for them to win a championship, which I know, CC, that is the standard to which you are judging LeBron, because, as you've said, that is the standard to which he is judging himself. Not, yeah, I mean, what else should we be right. judging him? It's, it's totally fair. So, so the question to win a title, how great does LeBron have to be? We'll just look at any time he's won a title. It's been, he hasn't quite averaged 41, 10, and 8. But I think most people would consider the back-to-back -back best games of LeBron's career, games 5 and 6 of the 2016 NBA Finals. You know how many points he had? 41. You know what his averages were about? About 41, 10, and 8. Like, we, for LeBron to compete in the finals, in every finals, aside from really the five-game win over the Thunder, he has had to have four plus A triple plus performances. I, I said yesterday, the only way for the Cavs to beat good teams right now, particularly when Kevin Love isn't playing, and he wasn't last night, and the Hornets aren't even a really good team, is for LeBron to be just out of this world great or for everyone to hit shots. I, I have more faith in LeBron's ability to be out of this world great than on his teammates' ability to go 18 of 30 from three. So the answer to your question is yes, absolutely yes. Quick follow-up before you jump in. Does he have to be out of the world great plus one other guy, plus a number two, or can he be out of the world great on his own? You, they can win a game with him. We saw them on his own take two from Golden State in 2015 NBA Finals. But to win the series, he needs other people. Yes, I'm impressed with what LeBron did. And what he did last night was because it's coming off of a horrible four quarters they had in, in Miami. The team was playing good. I think they won four in a row with Kevin Love coming back. Horrible performance in Miami, a game that Miami was fully engaged. I don't know what Cleveland was doing, but... Also, what LeBron did last night, you could see um, he got other people involved. You could see J.R. J.R. Smith played the best game that I had seen him play this season. I mean, no I mean, he was driving the ball to the bucket. He was a playmaker, playing some phenomenal defense on, on occasion. Let's not get carried away. But this is the way LeBron has to play for them because they're, they're, they're a bad defensive team. And they're not a good offensive team unless, unless they're rebounding with Kevin Love and unless they're getting up and down the court. Their half-court <laughs> sets aren't great. So when, they're, when you're not a great defensive team, you need to be able to outscore teams. And the only way Cleveland's going to be able to score that type of um, – have that type of scoring output is if LeBron goes for 35 or 40. Basically, turn it on when he wants to, and he has played like this all season. There's no reason to believe he wouldn't. It's whether he's going to get the help to really push him through a series. So it's not we're not talking one, two, or three games. Well, I the, I don't think we should take for granted what what LeBron's done over, since February. Oh, I don't 1st. say take it for granted. Well, but I don't he's think we can consistent with it. Yeah, I don't I don't know if it's totally fair to say. That we that well, LeBron's going to give you this level of output every night. I think it would be extraordinary if, come the Eastern Conference Finals, certainly come the NBA Finals, he is able to do this with regularity. To your point, I, the fact it shows you what situation the Cavs are in roster-wise. That even if LeBron were to do this every game in the NBA Finals, they still definitely could lose those NBA finals, which is the supporting cast question you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think they're any match for the team, the West. I'd be surprised they could win two games against Golden State or against Houston the way the Cavs are.
Like, they, they are not a good basketball team. They are LeBron James and a couple other supporting guys. And with Kevin Love, with Kevin Love, they can't even get through the East. All right? So this is the way LeBron would have to play for them to be even competitive in a in NBA Finals. In my book, this is, this is one of the weaker Cavs teams that I have seen with LeBron. All right, so let's talk about last night for a second. How impressed were you with this record, the double-digit record, these consecutive games tying Michael Jordan? Well, when you mention the people, he tied Michael Jordan, and in passing Kareem, which, which him and Michael Jordan, Kareem's three, those are the three of the greatest scores and three of the great champions that we've ever had. Um, the conversation will be always LeBron versus Michael Jordan. And these are the type of things that LeBron, he's going to have to get a bunch of them together to be able to approach who Michael Jordan is as the greatest player. So it becomes very, very important how long this streak, because what it talks about is longevity. I've told Nick this, the only way that LeBron is ever going to be able to either equal Michael Jordan and surpass him is based on the mass of numbers and longevity. How long can he stay in his prime as, as, as the number one basketball player in the world? I think that's the only way you're going to be able to judge him because you're never going to be able to flip around LeBron's career, those losses in those championships, Michael being 6-0. and So the totality of the numbers... That's the only way LeBron ever has to be able to sit next to Michael Jordan. The listen, this people need to recognize when Jordan, when this streak broke for Michael Jordan, it was post two retirements. It was he, his streak. He set this streak, or I guess ended this streak as a Washington Wizard. And when it happened back in 2001, this was considered at the time an unbreakable record. Because of the, think about who was third or second and third at that point in time on this, in this record book. Carl Malone was third at 575. Wow. Carl Malone, his biggest claim to and fame. And mind you, this number is 866. It's 866. It's, it it's, it's more than four full seasons, essentially. Yeah. More. It, it, Carl Malone's biggest claim to fame as a player is length of prime, as we've talked about, and consistency, night in, night out. He was at 575. Kareem, who up until LeBron had the longest extended prime of any maybe athlete we've ever seen, certainly basketball player, his record was 787. So when Jordan did it at 866 with the two retirements mixed in the middle of it, people said, no one will ever approach this. LeBron go is going to break this record Friday, right? Like he's going to break the record in the next game. So for some context on where other people are at, Kevin Durant, is it 63? Second most in the league right now among active players is James Harden. He's at 257. Giannis is at 81. Steph is at one. Like, Kobe's all-time record was 211. To not ever get hurt in the beginning of a game. We've talked about LeBron never having a significant injury. But what about an injury where you just, mm -hmm. where, where you tweak your ankle and you get knocked out for, you know, midway through the first quarter? Never get ejected right. early in a game. Like, to, to do this for over a decade, it's, it's, remarkable. it's absolutely utterly remarkable. And a record that most people didn't think would ever be approached. All right, we'll talk about this more this morning. But coming up, is Mike Tomlin fed up with... Le'Veon Bell. We'll get the Steelers' big picture next on First Things First.